All right, let's take a look at this homework, Systems 2.6. So we're going to start off with a little bit of a kind of review, finding the next two values in the pattern, and then describe how we determine these values. So the way I look at it is I try to figure out, is there a pattern here, and what's the difference? First, I want to start by adding. 3 to 6, I can add 3 to get that to work, right? 6 to 9, am I still adding 3? Yeah. 9 to 12, still adding 3. So 12 plus 3 would be 15, plus 3 would be 18. Description, how did I determine these? I just basically found the difference and added. Okay, which is similar to what I'm going to do. Now, 3 to 6. Yeah, I can add 3, but 6 plus 3, because remember, when we're dealing with patterns, we're either adding or sometimes multiplying by the same number. Adding 3 isn't going to work, is it? So is there another way? Think multiplication. 3 times 2. 6 times 2 is at 12. Yep. 12 times 2 is at 24. Yep. Times by 2, we get 48. And then 80, 96. So I found the number to multiply. Okay. Now, 24 to 20, we'd subtract 4, right? Subtracting 4, does that bring us to 16? Yep. Subtracting 4, so 8 and 4. Description, same as 1. Except I subtracted. Now, 24 to 12, we'd subtract 12. But subtracting 12 won't get us to 6. So, can we do the opposite of multiplication, which is division? Yeah. What if I divided by 2? That would work. So 3 divided by 2 would be 1.5, or 3 halves. Either one works. Divide that by 2 would be 0.75, or 3 fourths. So same as 2, but divide. Okay? Simple enough, right? Okay, and kind of some more quick review. This we've just still and barely got finished with, huh? I'm going to draw my axes, y-axis, x-axis. Change this one to slope-intercept form, because I like that better. And we graph. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 1 is like negative 1 over 1, so down 1 to the right 1. Or we go the exact opposite, up and to the left. Draw all these points quickly. Graph it. For our next one. So, negative 3. Slope is 2x, so like 2 over 1. So we're going to go up 2 to the right one because it's positive. Or we should notice down 2 into the left one. Okay, now this one doesn't look like it's quite going to match up, is it? So let's just take kind of a guess and think. Okay, right there. My guess would be like negative one half for the x value, or 0.5, and then negative 4.5, or negative four and a half. Okay, so let's double check these in our equations to see if we're right. Okay. So let's say x will say negative 0.5 for x. We'll say four, negative 4.5. That is a negative. For y, does that equal negative 5? Negative plus negative makes a bigger number that's negative. 0.5 and 4.5 give us negative 5. Okay, so it works for that one. Let's double check our second one. So y was negative 4.5. Now, 2 times negative 0.5 minus 3. Okay, right? So 2 times negative 0.5 would be negative 1. Minus 3 would be negative 4. So it doesn't quite work for this one, does it? So did we do anything wrong here? Down to the left one. So it must be off a little bit more. Okay? This is when I would use technology because trying to guess at those decimals, it's not the easiest thing to do. So this is when I use my graphing calculator to figure it out, or some other graphing calculator 
Desmos is my favorite when I've got the option at a computer. So I do it on Desmos, and it actually comes out to be, that's what I suspected after ours didn't work. It's actually negative two-thirds, negative four, and one-third. Add those together, it still equals negative five on this first one. Okay, double the x value, negative two-thirds times two, would be negative four-thirds minus three. Well, negative four-thirds is like negative 1.3 minus three gives us that one. So that is our answer. Sometimes you need that technology to help you because some of these answers aren't the best. Okay, now let's try this next one. So subtract 8x from both sides. Negative 4y equals negative 8x plus 16. We're doing this a lot, aren't we? You should be getting a lot of good practice on this. So y equals positive 2x minus 4. Well, let's draw our coordinates or axes a little better. I always like those to be a little darker. Okay, so down to negative 4. Now 2 over 1, so once again up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Because this is my first one, I usually want to put down as many points as possible. Makes it easier, usually, when you're trying to figure out your graph. There's my line. Okay, second one. So we'd subtract 21x. I need to get a new stylus because this one seems to be giving me issues. 3y equals negative 21x plus 15. Divide by 3. We get y equals negative 7x plus 5. So my y intercept at 5. Then negative 7 over 1. So down 7. Over 1. Nice. This one turned out a lot better. So our answer is right here is down 1, 2, so negative 2 for y, and over 1, so 1, negative 2. If we wanted to, we could double check it, but usually if it comes out nice like that, I don't worry about double checking. Okay, now what we did in class, okay, how are we going to figure this out? Solving a system with, we could try to graph it, but there's other ways to think about it, okay? So if I think about this, two pair of glasses plus a pair of shorts is going to be equal to $50, right? We have three pair of shorts, and one pair of glasses is going to be also equal to 50 So is there a way that I can figure out what one of these are? The way I would do it is think about it like this. Well, let's say I didn't buy the glasses, okay? That would be $50 minus two pair of sunglasses, right? That would tell me what I've got going on with my shorts. So, each pair of those shorts is basically $50 minus two sunglasses. So I could write it like this, sunglasses plus $50 minus these glasses. And we did it three times, right? So I could think of it as being three equals fifty dollars. So fifty dollars three times is a hundred and fifty. Two glasses three times is six glasses, right? And that equals fifty. So I've got we're subtracting a bunch of glasses. I've got one pair, they're gonna cancel out. I can subtract this one fifty over. Now you may have done this differently. So I'd be negative 5 pairs of glasses. I'm just going to simplify, right? Equals 50 minus 150 is negative 100. I divide by negative 5 to find out what each pair of glasses is. And I get a pair of glasses costs negative 100 divided by negative 5 would be a positive 20. 20 bucks. Does that work out? So, how much would the shorts be? Well, if each glass is up here is $20, 50 minus 20 minus 20 would be 10. So $10 for shorts, 
and 20 for glasses. Does that work? 20 plus 20 plus 10 is 50. 20 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 is also 50. And there we go. Okay, kind of weird to think of it that way, but that's, that's, that's how I figured it out. You may have figured it out differently, and that's great. Okay, Nadia and Peter visit the candy store. Nadia buys three candy bars and four fruit roll-ups for two eighty-four. Peter also buys three candy bars, but can only afford one additional fruit roll-up. His purchase cost is one seventy-nine. What is the cost of candy bar and a fruit roll-up individually? So, we've got some, let's see, so three candy bars, right? So I guess we could put pluses here. And four fruit roll-ups. Fruit roll-ups are going to be red. And that was equal to 284. Okay, kind of like we're adding them all together. And then Peter also bought three candy bars, but only one fruit roll-up. And his cost was 179. So think about this. There, if I subtract one fruit roll-up, that's going to give me the cost of three candy bars. And they both bought three candy bars. So 179 minus a fruit roll-up is equal to three candy bars. Well, can't I just say we can take this and substitute it in for the three candy bars? Because we found out they were the same. So I'd have 284 equals 179 minus a fruit roll-up plus four fruit roll-ups. Now, I'm subtracting a fruit roll-up and adding one, so they cancel out. I can also subtract 179 from my cost total. We get borrow would be five. That would be zero. 105. So 105 is equal to two fruit roll-ups. So if I divide 105 by two, that's going to give me how many fruit roll-ups I have, right? So that would be 0 0.5. That would be 10 minus be zero. 5, 2 goes into 5 twice, B0, 4 minus that, bring down the 0, so it'd be 52, 5, okay, which isn't quite exactly, you know, when we're dealing with money, so 52, if you round it up, 53, but that'll throw us off, so then going back up here, 0.525 for each of these, 525. So add those together times it by 4. 0.525. B02. 4 times 4 is 8. Plus 2 is 10. 0, 1. 4 times 5 is 20. So 21. So two dollars and ten cents for all those fruit roll-ups. Which means the candy bars are gonna cost. Right? So 284 minus that be four, 74 cents divided by three would be the candy bars. Oh, this one's kind of ugly too, isn't it? <laughs> Clear some space here. Sometimes these are harder to figure out than we think they are, aren't they? These real life problems really make it much more difficult. So, 0.74 divided by 3. 3 goes into that twice. That would be 0.6 minus 1. Bring down to 4. 3 goes into 14 four times. That's 12 minus. Give us 20. We'll bring down another 0. And that would be 6. 18. Okay. That's going to be like 2 thirds. That's going to be a hideous one to deal with. But. That'll tell us that fruit roll-up is about 53 cents, and the candy bar is about 25. Those are cheap candy bars. About 25 if we round. And that's as close as we're going to get on this one. Okay? All right. Farmer knows that his chickens were loose and were running around with the cows in the cow pen. He quickly counted 100 heads and 270 legs. How many chickens did he have? How many cows? So we've got chickens and cows. Okay, so chickens have how many legs? Two legs, one head. Cow 
cows have four legs, one head. Okay, so we know that we can kind of set this up, and I, and I think this one we'd want to make more of an equation. So, if legs are x and head is y, I know that, no, I'd have to go, we want cows and chickens, not legs and heads, don't we? So x for chickens, y for cows. So, all right, so class started, so I had to drop off on this, so I'm not sure what we were talking about. I think we are saying x for chickens, y for cows. So chickens have two legs, so I'd go two times number of chickens for legs, plus four times y, and that would equal 270 legs. Then for the heads, there's one head on each, so it would just be x plus y equals 100. So we know we have 100 total animals, because we have 100 total, total heads. Okay, so what I can do is say, well, let's subtract the cow heads, because if we subtracted cow heads, that would give us chicken heads, right? Or the number of chickens. So taking this, we can put it in for the number of chickens, and that way we can figure this out. So I distribute, so 200 minus 2y plus 4y equals 270. So now what we're doing is the same stuff we did up here, okay? The only thing is we're not doing it visually, we're doing it with the representations. So simplify that, it would give us 2y, right, 4 minus 2, subtract 200, and we'd get 70 divided by 2, so we'd get y equals 35. So what does that tell us? It tells us we have 35 cows. So if we have 35 cows, to find the number of chickens, just go 100 minus 35, okay, which would give us 65 chickens. Boom, right there. All right, now solving one variable inequalities and graphing them, just that um, kind of a review again. So get the x's on the same side, treat it just like an equation, so we'd end up with 2x plus 10 is less than 14, subtract 10. 2x is less than 4, divide by 2, x is less than 2. So I go to 2, and I have to decide solid circle or hollow circle. No equal to, so I know it's a hollow circle, 2 is my boundary. x is less than, less than is going to the left. So we do it like this. Okay, and this is, by the way, what we could call the interval notation. Not too concerned about that right now. Okay, next one. I could add 5x to both sides, giving us 7x plus 6 is greater than 55. Subtract 6 from both sides, and get 7x is greater than 49. Divide by 7, x would be greater than 7. Okay, once again, no equal to, so it's 7, hollow circle. x is bigger. Bigger means to the right, so we shade to the right. 12, I'm going to move over here. 2 times x over 4 plus 3 is greater than 6 times x minus 1. Okay, a few ways we can attack this problem to start off. Um, probably the easiest would be to just multiply. Now, 2 times x over 4 would be 2x over 4, which we could reduce to 1 half. So I'd have 1 half x, or x divided by 2, same thing, plus 3 is greater than 6 times x is 6x, 6 times negative 1, negative 6. Let's subtract the 3, we get 1 half x is greater than 6x minus 9, subtract the 6x. Now we've got to deal with fractions, right? So 1 half minus 6, make it a fraction get the common denominator, so times this by 2, 1 half minus 12 halves, because 6 is 12, 12 divided by 2 is 6, so then we just subtract the tops, so we get negative 11 halves x is greater than ne negative 9. Now what I would do is I would times both sides by 2. Those would cancel, I'd be left with negative 11x, 
greater than negative 18. Then I can divide by negative 11. Now remember, when we divide by a negative, we've got to switch our inequality. So I'd have x is less than positive 18 over 11, because a negative over a negative is a positive. So 18 11 is basically, if we want to make it a proper fraction, or mixed number, I mean, 11 goes into 18 once, with 7 11 left over. 7 11 if you got that decimal, some of you would prefer that. Okay, 6 or 5.5 over 11 would be 0.5. So this is bigger than half. So I'm going to go up to 1, no equal to, so about right there is where we draw 1 and 7 11 um, and then x is less than, so I shade below. Okay, now our last problem. Um, distribute negative 2 times x, negative 2x. Negative 2 times 1 half, negative 1. 9x plus 4, add 2x, oh yay, another 11. 11x plus 4 is less than or equal to negative 1. Subtract 4. 11x is less than or equal to negative 5. Divide by 11 again. And we get x is less than or equal to negative 5 11 So that's a little less than 0.5, as we kind of already showed here. So I just go a little less than 0.5, negative 0.5. So right about there. It's got the equal to, so I fill in my circle. x is less than or equal to less than, we shade this side, and we are done.